All right, good morning. Uh, my topic this morning is on target. Um, Emerson, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of the American transcendentalists, he said that we should hitch our wagon to a star. Uh, but I have to be realistic, don't I? I mean, that's the, the natural response when you hear something like that. Dream big, oh, but I gotta be realistic. Um, but I think, well, what's, what's realistic? I think, well, realistic is beyond our current grasp, but within our reach. It, it all takes place at the same time. So for me, I think the rule of thumb is it's got to be 50% believable to you, right? Uh, and, and to no one but you. It's just got to be 50% believable to you. And if you have any question about whether someone in your life is going to be on board, then don't share it with them, okay? It's like, this is like, just be sensible, okay? Somebody who can't row in the direction your boat is going needs to be in another boat, okay? And I mean that with nothing but love. A comfortable boat for them, a boat with a life preserver and room service, all that stuff. But what we're talking about is something that's 50% believable to you and you don't need somebody else making it 49%, 40%, 30% believable for you because of their doubt, their fear, their negativity, their whatever. You know, many people have a uh, kind of this traffic jam approach to life, where they feel all hemmed in by life circumstances. You know, they're like, oh, I can't go forward, I can't go back. I can't go right, I can't go left. I can't stay right where, here where I am. I can't change lanes. It's all, it's just, it's just so much, and they feel absolutely paralyzed by their inability to move in any direction. But you know, the absence of a clear-cut direction and ability to move is what thwarts people's motivation. So I think having a target is what gives us a direction, right? If we have a target, we work according to our particular plan. We realize, hey, yeah, traffic jams come along, but they're always only temporary, even the worst ones. And I know I speak from experience here. Even the worst ones are only temporary. I sit there and I have to remind myself, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. I imagine divine flow. I imagine divine circulation. And eventually, it passes. Sometimes I've had to hit my head against the steering wheel a couple dozen times, but eventually, it really, really does pass. So it seems to me that sustaining movement requires something specific to move toward. Right? The ability to move is our plan, I think. You know, people often approach um, a target uh, like prayer and meditation. They, they think about doing it. They think about having a target, you know, but they don't actually settle on a target. You know? Thinking about it is not the same as doing it. Right? It's like um, you can think about working out. You can think about the gym. But until you actually engage in that experience on an ongoing basis, you will not have any results. So here's the thing. Writing it down also makes it 50% more likely to happen. Wow, that's a lot of bang for your buck, isn't it? Just writing something down. You know, to say, you know, to write down, I am now free from allergies or I am now in my perfect loving relationship. So, you know, Charlie Brown uh, <laughs> uh, knows a lot about this kind of thing. Uh, he was, uh, he just, but, well, let me say, so there's this, uh, a Charlie Brown where he did not understand the value of establishing goals, uh, targets, and having a clear action and direction. So one day he's in his backyard, uh, and he is actually himself involved in target practice with his bow and arrow. Uh, and he pulls the string back as far as his muscles will allow, and he lets the arrow fly into the fence, and then he runs up and draws a target around the arrow. Yeah. And so Lucy is watching this, and she says, that's no way to have uh, target practice, Charlie Brown. You're supposed to draw a target and then shoot the arrow at the target. And Charlie Brown says, I know that, Lucy. He says, but if you do it my way, you never miss. Mm -hmm. So. I think we don't want to approach life like Charlie Brown, afraid to have a goal for uh, fear that we'll miss, afraid that if we head for a target and we don't get there, we say, well, I, I, I just don't want to be that disappointed. You know, make a decision, clarify where you're going, and apply some effort. This is the formula. You can always change it. If you start moving in a direction and you say, you know, I've changed my mind. I guess this is not really what I wanted. Then you can let that go. It's OK. People are, I think, afraid to commit. What if it happens? What if it doesn't? 
Both of those are scary. You know, to remain in limbo, though, is not a worthy goal of you as an expression of infinite, loving, intelligent spirit. God gave you free will and choice, and it's yours to use. So on October 14th in 1947, Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier, and scientists said it could not be done. But experts, uh, you know, experts said that the pilot in the plane could not endure such speed. They would just combust. Right? But Jaeger flew his Bell Aviation X-1 plane at 700 miles per hour. And then, three weeks later, at 1,612 miles per hour. In his autobiography, Jaeger reflects, he says, after all the anxiety, all the anticipation, breaking the sound barrier was really a letdown. Yeah. He says, the sonic barrier, the unknown, was just a poke through jello, you know, a perfectly paved speedway. So it was a myth destroying event when he went through the sound barrier. So the hoopla surrounding breaking down flight barriers existed only in people's minds. Right? And so then I look at that and I think, okay, where are there barriers in my mind that things cannot be? Uh, overcome, that things cannot be healed, that things cannot be gotten through, that things cannot, uh, I cannot move beyond certain things. Uh, so that's, that's the barriers I think we have to look at in our own minds. Um, because what these barriers do is that they create personal limitations for us. So I often say to people, you know, look, you have to stay with church for a while so you can get the benefit of spiritually deepening on the path. You know, people, though, are so willing to leave their spiritual life, you know, uh, to, to sort of whim, you know? Uh, uh, and I think it's the same thing where we have decided on what the target is in our life to not leave our target to whim. Um, you know, wonderful uh, Doris Day passed away uh, uh, not too long ago, and one of the songs that she was so famous for was Que Sera Sera, right? That is such a not science of mind song, okay? <laughs> Love Doris Day, love her work with animals, love all the old movies with Rock Hudson and all that stuff, but que sera, sera no. We do not que sera, sera right? Because que sera, sera is like, oh, I'll go whichever way the winds of life blow me. I'm just a leaf on the wind being beaten about. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. No, it will not. It will not. We do not que sera, sera in Science of Mind. We create. We co-create with God. We make something happen, not que sera, sera. You know, que sera, sera is like, I don't give a patootie in the universe, and I will accept whatever comes. And I understand that people do that, and I understand that some people are even happy with it. What I don't understand is the people who are unhappy with it, they complain about it a lot, but they don't do anything different. That just sends me over the edge. Oh, my God. And, and I'm not just talking about other people, because I, myself, am guilty of the same thing when I don't do anything about it. You know, in the science of mind, we believe that there's one power, God. It's infinite mind. And this mind holds us in its embrace of love always. Its intelligence is unlimited. Its ability to do unfathomable things is available to all of us, right? But it can only do for us what we are conscious of being, right? So I would have to ask myself is what must I be in consciousness to hit my target? What kind of person do I need to be? What kind of thinking do I need to be thinking? What kind of talking do I need to be talking to hit my target? See, the expansion, I think, is in our, recept is in our receptivity. It acts according to our belief. Jesus said, it's done unto you as you believe. You know, so when we see other people accomplish things, what we see other people accomplish, we have to know for ourselves, that's available to me also. I can accomplish that if I will cultivate that consciousness, if I will think those thoughts, if I will deepen my faith to that level. You know, laws are no respecters of person, and that's what we work with in the science of mind. We work with spiritual laws. So principles don't change to fit what is comfortable or convenient for us. Principles don't accommodate us. You know, it's not what you desire uh, or the life you feel you should have that you get. It's what you think creatively that determines what you experience. And we all do some pretty creative thinking. And sometimes it's for a more abundant, healthy, prosperous life. And other times it's for a limited, fearful, sick life.
So if principle is unlimited, and I believe it is, right, and our ability to use it is unlimited, and I believe it is, our belief can always change. See, that's where growth comes in. Our beliefs, our consciousness can grow. So the answer is already within us, we teach in the science of mind. God in us is the answer. You know, God gives to us in the realm of ideas. So God's dropping in the idea, the solution, the next step all the time. So each of us, I believe, is a creative center of his or her own individualized universe. And so when we depend on divine principle, we never um, stoop to another person's level, but actually our job becomes to bring all people up to where we are. So as we move toward our target, you know, I think we have to get the vision of having hit the target before we actually hit the target. You know, you've got to see yourself with your arrow in the bullseye. You know, Proverbs says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. So I think we demonstrate what we think in consciousness, not what we wish, not what we want, not what we desire, what we think. So be, it, begin by asking yourself, what more can I be in the area of health? What more could I be in health? What more could I be in the area of loving relationship? What more could I be in the area of uh, uh, creative expression or abundance or contribution? So one day, this frog steps into a pothole, and the frog cannot get out of the pothole. All of his attempts at jumping out fall short. So a dog comes by and offers to help him, but, but, but couldn't figure out how to get the frog out of there. And other animals tried to help him, but they only failed. And so uh, they decide, the animals, that they will go together, and they're going to find some help for the frog. So we'll go get some help. We'll be back in a while. So not much later, the frog hopped down the road past the other animals. And they said, hey, we thought you couldn't get out. And the frog says, oh, I couldn't. I couldn't. But then all of a sudden, I heard this rumbling, and I realized it was a tractor, and it was heading straight for me. So I had to. Right? And, and that's it, right? So notice where we need to get out of a hole, where we need to make a change, where we need to do something different. Are we like the frog? Do we wait till it becomes life or death before we do something about it? You know, because sometimes when we're settled and we're comfortable, growth is doubtful, you know, because it's like, well, can't I just sit back and enjoy where I am right now, you know? Again, where there is no vision, the people perish, the scriptures say. So vision is the art of seeing what's currently invisible. Right? Now, just because we don't see it with our human eye doesn't mean it isn't a reality in the mind of God. In fact, it already is. Right? So it's important to have a target, a dream, a focus, a vision of what you want, of what you want to live your life by, of where you're headed. Because, you know, without that target, it's easy to lose our sense of purpose. It's easy to lose our direction. And then we say, oh, my God, all these years have gone by. Where did they go? I, don't, I have no idea. It all just sort of slipped through my fingers. So what's my target and what's my plan for how I'm going to get there? I think these are the two important pieces, where I'm headed and how I'm going to get there. Is there any difference between where we are right now and where we would like to be? Yes, of course. Because if there were no difference, we would be where we'd like to be. We'd already be there, right? So often, when we add an additional purpose uh, to what we have, I think an opportunity is presented to, to move toward our target in a greater way. So imagine if you had a consistent, let's just say 10% increase in energy. And if you had a 10% increase in commitment would having 10% more energy and 10% more commitment make much of a difference in your life, just that little 10%? I believe it would. I believe it would make an enormous, enormous difference. And we think, well, you know, can all of this, can all of this really be spiritual? Yes, because, you know, in the Old Testament, Nehemiah had a quest to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. And he believed in his heart, you know, that, he, that this is what he was called to do you know, to quiet the moans of desperation of the people of Israel. And so the wall of the glorious city of David was in ruins for 160 years, you know, destroyed by the Babylonians. It was rubble, right? And so Nehemiah had um, 
very little material to work with, but does have a specific plan for rebuilding. Okay? In 52 days, just 52 days, Nehemiah and his recruits erected a perfect wall around the city. And like I said, it had been down for 160 years. He saw the wall in his mind. He shared his dream with those who could help. Parentheses, people who were on board. Not people who were going to say, oh, Nehemiah, why do you want to build the wall? That's going to be so hard. It's so hot today. Why don't we wait till the fall when it's cool? Blah, 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 blah. Right? So he saw the wall in his mind. He shared his dream with people who could help. And then he activated his plan. Abraham Lincoln, a long time ago, said, things come to those who wait, but only things left over from those who hustle. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln said that. So if you're good with the leftovers, frankly, I don't think we are. In the science of mind, we don't want just the leftovers, you know? So what you already desire, sincerely believe, vividly imagine, and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. So a quick way to increase your vision is to be of help to other people. It always seems to me that when we take the focus off ourself, then spirit brings in something new. You know, a new idea, uh, just, just something new. So there was this monk who prayed for um, a vision of Jesus. Uh, and he heard a voice. And it said, it's going to happen at daybreak. It's going to happen at daybreak. And so the next morning, he's up really early at his little, uh, in his prayer altar, and he's praying, and, and he happens to notice that there's a storm going on outside. And there's a little knock at the door. And he turns, but as he's turning, he begins to see the vision. Now, he knows the knocking is probably some traveler who's lost. And he's torn. That, should I stay here and meditate and have this vision that I've been praying for for so long, or help the traveler? And so he does his duty. He helps the traveler. And it's a child. And so he brings the child in, and he gives him a blanket, and sits him by the fire, and he gives him some soup and some bread, gets them all warmed up. And then the child falls asleep in front of the fire. And the monk goes back to his devotion. You know, no, uh, he knows the vision is gone, right? But when he closes his eyes, the vision is actually there. And it's bigger and better and better than ever before. And what comes to him in his vision is, are these words. If you had not helped my little one, I could not have stayed. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that often... The greater good that we seek in our life comes when we open our heart to be of service to other people. Because, of course, the science of mind teaches us again and again that we are already one with other people. So these are the words of Jesus. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to just focus on the spiritual truth that God is right where we are, that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And we have been endowed with free will and choice and creativity. And it is absolutely ours to establish what the target is, where we are headed in life. And so I claim for each and every one of us that we leave here today with a target in mind. And if down the road we decide that's not it, we can always change it. But at least for today, we select a target. And I know that we start to think the thoughts and believe the things and say the words that absolutely support our full experience of achieving that target, whatever it may be. Now, the universe has no judgment on our target. It just absolutely supports what we continually focus upon. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children. We know that right where they are, they are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world. So everything that looks so fearful and discordant to us, everything that looks like separation thinking, we claim that God is present even in the midst of that. And that on some level, great healing is taking place and we are open and willing for it. We are even willing to be a part of that healing. So we lend our consciousness of love and peace and harmony to all that we see. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. 
We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is raising up, there is healing for each and every one. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.